So uh, what you up to today? You doing any uh, anything fun with your time? Well, I've been out uh, putting up larger signs because it took me a while to get my signs, my bigger signs around. I mean, you know. Uh, How big are your larger signs? They're three foot by four foot. And that's, oh, wow. that's, that's as big as they, they're, that's as big as they're going to get. And I got 25 of them yesterday. Uh-huh. I got out 13 yesterday and, and that kind of thing. I've been, you know, cleaning house and doing little odds and ends around the way. Your so, chair is extremely, would you like a quieter chair to fidget in? Oh, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'll try not to fidget too much. <laughs> no gotcha questions. But, so well, you're running for Board of Supervisors, District 2, correct? Yes. Okay, who are you running against? We've got, we've got Lori Cowan. Yeah, and Valerie... Uh, Starkey? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you've kind of been running for a while, haven't you? I remember you you set up at the farmer's market as far as like a couple of years back thinking about all of this, getting ready for this campaign. I've been thinking about it for quite a while, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what happens is, you know, you don't really get started. I actually started really campaigning back in the end of September. Okay. And at the since the end of September, uh, I have gone out and knocked on at least... 625 doors at least really <laughs> you know i may have at marked uh, i've been doing a lot nate just recently because of putting up signs because i would never put up a sign without talking to the person first mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know a lot of times people just go out and put signs on vacant lots and that kind of stuff so even if i'm doing that i have to talk to the person so i probably caught in about 650 houses total out of that 650 houses since september uh i have gotten basically 15 negative comment comments and the negative comments are get the off of my lawn <laughs> <laughs> so i've only got 15 of those uh the the biggest the biggest problem that i see is is twofold and one of it has to do with people who just plain aren't voting you know uh-huh. and that's very disheartening to me because you you need to vote uh, because if you don't vote, you don't pitch, purchase your right to complain, as mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned. But uh, but anyway, so there was, there's was there been about 65, 70 of those. So I've been to 900 houses. Oh, my gosh. Um, what I have found, is, another disturbing part, is um, the amount of uh, bed and breakfast type places. And like the they, Airbnb stuff? Yeah, you yeah. Out? Uh, there's been at least 100 to 150, okay? Wow. Uh, and that that really contributes a lot to an issue that's kind of dear of mine, which is affordable housing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it affects all the way down, and it goes all the way into the homeless issue, uh, because if you haven't got, if you haven't got places for <clears throat> the upper middle class, they're shoving down into the middle class, and right. the middle class is shoving down into the so forth all the way down to where the homeless don't have shelters or out access to shelters and airbnb things like that situations like that drive up uh, uh housing costs just yep. because because you know there are things not on the market because they're being used as a business basically and i'm not opposed to that at mm-hmm. all i think that, that that that's that's entrepreneurship is very 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 good i just it was interesting because probably three years ago uh, at the farmer's market, a lady came up and sat down to me and she said, you know, one of the things that is really bothering me about about Crescent City up here is the number of Airb- Airbnbs that are starting to show up because mm-hmm. when that happens, you end up with a real housing shortage. Right. And that's exactly what, what is happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, over, over, and, uh, over and on top of all of the, I mean, just sort of the endemic housing shortage that we have mm-hmm. here just because the cost of new construction and, and regulation and all the things we have happening. All right, I want to take let's let's take a, a step up if we can and just kind of start uh, uh, with with kind of a high level question. Why are you running? Why are you running in this election? Why are you running against Lori? Why are you you why are you seeking to be on the board of supervisors now? Well, basically, I'm I'm looking at the whole situation from a perspective of uh, I'm just a normal everyday average person, uh, and that's the that's the clientele that I. I Represent, mm-hmm. and I see that there's not enough of that on these these boards. They're 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 different. It's not that that's bad or good or in between. The way I look at it, I'm I'm one of the people out there. I'm just one. I'm a normal normal person. I'm not trying to climb social ladders, or I'm not trying to be a part of the the committee up there. What I want is to get things done in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been here for 25 years, and uh, 
what I see is there are still things that are waiting to be done that were being done, should have been done 25 years ago, or at least started. What sorts uh, of things? Well, okay, for example, you know, we've got the whole situation with Front Street, okay, mm -hmm. and, and I, I also throw in K Street right in front of the state state uh, park office there mm -hmm. because oh, yeah, that's, that's a, those are bad things, and they detour from... Uh, the development of tourism mm -hmm. and because the, those are really bad roads and I know that there's been there's been plans to fix it and then they, they get ready to go and everybody goes ready for it and then it falls through and I've been hearing right at this point that the tribes and the county are getting ready to do something and it's the, it's the long whole big project uh, and so consequently I'm hoping that it gets done and it doesn't fall through because I don't care who does it. it it's it's something that needs to be done. Right, right. Uh, you know, I I look at it from this perspective of if they had started this in 25 years ago and done it in sections, mm -hmm. uh, the the whole thing probably would have been done by now. You know, it's it's do you, what happens is you get get the money to go through it and do it and everything else, and then you find out it's going to be not quite enough, and then the, the the grant people will then come away and say, well, you haven't got enough to do it, so we'll give the grant someplace else. Exactly, exactly. It's like, and especially look going after grant funding, you're kind of hemsy into these certain sort of yeah. you know, prescribed actions. Okay, so it sounds like you've got like kind of a. Uh, I mean, the kind of nuts and bolts sort of, of government going on. It, it's not you're not here to, to to protest, say, I don't know, a bill in Sacramento and have a big meeting and, and 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 taxpayer time and money for a big dog and pony show that really has no end for local residents. Right. Well, one of one of the things that people need to know about me is, as I said, I'm, I'm a local, just a local yokel type person. I believe that that government should serve the people. Mm -hmm. and not the other way around mm -hmm. and too often even on a local level it's it's the other way around and that's just the way i've i've been you know so uh basically i look at partnerships and try to get things formed and done and do the things that need to happen in the county i don't care who gets credit for it as long as it gets done mm -hmm. i mean we've got a we've got a whole situation with tourism for example tourism we're just coming off of probably one of the better years that we've ever had and there have been a couple of things that have been re responsible for that uh the the seaquake thing has been a, been one of the things mm -hmm. uh, the airport terminal has been another one of those things and those are very good but they're just starts and there's issues with all of them and the type of situation that we need to take a look at is we have got plenty of uh what is it Phar pharmacies mm -hmm, in our mm -hmm. area we have plenty of automobile centers in our area we have very few grocery stores mm -hmm. we have very few really shops that tourism would be be real excited about to go into i mm -hmm. mean we've got we've got ocean world we've got the, the gentleman across the street from, from Ocean World, I don't know exactly, right next to Perlita's. We've got Johnston's, um, you know, and so, but we need more of that. And we need to have, get rid of some of the, we need to get to the, some of the empty buildings downtown. And there are ways to work in, in both private and governmental partnerships that will help that out. I mean, at the harbor, for example, we, we try to keep our rents low. Mm -hmm. And then uh, during the summer summer months when the tourism is, is high and, and those kinds of things, we do uh, where we charge a percentage of their business. So what happens is that way they can survive during the, the winter months and make money for us in, in, in the summer months. And, mm -hmm. and that's kind of an issue that probably could be looked at downtown, for example. I mean, I, I can't say say enough i mean the divas do a great job at trying to bring business down there and stuff but it, it's a matter of getting places open like the toy store mm -hmm. and having them stay open yeah, yeah. you know uh, and that's that's important and and that'll build our tourist industry that's just one of the things so we need to work in private partnerships and with par private people and also with government people and just also trying to get things done so that things will stay open and we can thrive more year round as opposed to to just the sp summer months that's such a tricky tricky thing to do in this town i did uh, um uh, uh i was digitizing a recording for the historical society um, um part of this relationship we have with them the uh um uh, this was last year and uh, kind of did a podcast mentioned this a little bit 
the first tapes, they've got a stack of cassette tapes and they just exist on cassette. And so I was putting them on a, in, in, into a computer form. The first tapes I did, it was the redevelopment, was that what it was? The redevelopment agency, but the ad hoc redevelopment agency, uh, a, a meeting that was broadcast over um, the station that was downtown back then in the in the sixty. K-Pod. No, 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 no. Way before then, there was another one. Mm. There was another station downtown in the early sixties, and uh, um, I forgot what it is now. I've seen pictures of the studio and things like that. But anyway, the uh, uh, the meeting that was being broadcast was. Um, uh, what are we going to do now that this uh, this tidal wave, which they were calling, had come in and wiped out Crescent City? This was the the redevelopment agency, a public meeting mm-hmm. being broadcast on the radio to to describe and lay out the plan for downtown and rebuilding. And they had said one of the plans that are one of the problems that they had coming into all of this this crisis in 1964. There were guys sitting there. This is you know 50 plus years ago, sitting there and the, the city council members saying, you know, we've got these stores downtown that just seem to be perpetually like empty, you know, and people are going elsewhere to shop and and in, in, in traveling far afield in the region to, to to meet their needs and not coming downtown. It was a problem even then. How? How do you even get your head around addressing a problem that seems just so folded into the grain of the community like that? That's difficult. Well, that's a that's a difficult situation. And what you've got to do is you've got to talk about talk with with people in both private the private sector and see what we can come up with that keeps these things open. I mean, you know, even if you look at even you you know the the pet store store that was in there was is mm-hmm. gone again. Mm-hmm. The uh, the uh, dog groomer is gone again. Uh, it's it's you got to take a look at businesses that might partake you know might stick that people in the county actually need too because you've got to count them along with it yeah. uh, uh, because during the the winter months they're the people that are going to be supporting that mm-hmm. I mean you know we're we're losing uh, six degrees of celebration by by June you know the mercantile bookstore is is going you know we it is yes they'll be gone by the end of summer for Patty's whatever. closing that's what I've heard oh wow. You know, they, that's just, you know, so hopefully that's not true, but oh, that's yeah. what I have heard. Oh. Um, my wife was in there and that's what she, you know, she brought that information back. And I and I said, well, okay. So, I mean, and Patty, I I used to go into Patty's when it was the big store and the, the nightclub was in the back. Right. I loved going to the nightclub. It I, was that cool. Was, that's where those seats came from. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they were. Are. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know... Uh, you know there were some problems then going on and and yeah. that kind of stuff and and they sh- shut it down and rebuild and tried to get some stuff and there was they made her store and the the nightclub basically three or four different build- stores mm-hmm. and none of them are full still yeah you know uh now the the front end where jefferson state bookstore used to be mm-hmm. has now got somebody in there and that's a that's a good that's a nice interesting store at that time i like going in there and, and checking things out although i'm i'm a not a great consumer uh i have to i i go in and i check and go well that will be nice that would be nice that <laughs> would be nice and then i leave yeah because i just you know i i mean i've got enough stuff in my house and and that kind of thing so well, good good because you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't be uh, uh equated with our consumption yeah that's not the way to define oneself that's so anyway way. i just I, but i do buy things that just all of a sudden jump out and say buy me you mm-hmm, know so mm-hmm. that's that's an issue but it's a hard issue to get around because you've got you've got you've got so many monopolies in this area mm-hmm. that that they're the they're more concerned with their survival than they are concerned with this the the community survival yeah yeah and those things are supposed to dovetail in a best case scenario and, yeah. and it seldom happens yeah so i mean there's a lot that you, that has to be taken a look at i mean there's so but bigger picture you're so you're you know you're hanging your hat or at least del north's hat on tourism that's the future I think that tourism is going to be the future, yeah. And you know, there's there's also a couple of things that that are in the work with uh, maybe energy production. Really? Yeah. So I mean, you, you can take a look at that as a possibility, but it does require some some uh, transfer stations here on on the on the in the area so mm-hmm. that you can ship energy out. One of the things that that is another thing that's very important at this time is broadband. Now I am not sure if they've gotten broadband all the way through, and it's been I fighting. Talk, I remember Finnegan talking about broadband and all of that. And even back then, it, it was like there was one T1 line that came into the county, and I'm waiting for it. 
<laughs> and it's and, like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm so I'm not sure it was ever has ever been done. Right. But broadband is another key because then you can do what you can do is you can have a lot of millennial type jobs up here where they do computer work and everything mm -hmm. and ship it to the Bay Area if they need to, or even just do some online stuff and bring it up here. But the broadband is a big issue. We need to have that taken care of also. Yeah. So I mean that. So tourism is a big issue, a, a big a big thing also individual things with broadband and that kind of computer type stuff are, are are interesting and again you've got to take a look at it through this formation of partnerships and get these things done you know so it could be private you know one of the little pet peeves that i have right now is a safety issue of of uh if you drive down pacific avenue and you get to a street and Inyo, mm -hmm. right there, mm -hmm. the four-way stop down there, and you turn right off of Pacific into into, into Inyo heading at nighttime, school. heading towards the heading towards Washington Boulevard yeah. and, and C West. Um, if you turn right there, you go two blocks, you're in pitch blackness. Oh my God, thank you. This is the thing. This is if I were to ever run, and I will never run, but if I were to ever run, that's the thing. The unincorporated parts of our community that do not have street lights. It seems like that is the quickest, easiest way to change the game as far as quality of life in the community goes. Well, there's a number of ways of dealing with that. And the first thing that you have to do with it is you have to kind of take a look at safety issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, the biggest thing that I see is during the winter months, starting late fall all the way through early spring uh, if you get out into the county you have children waiting at bus stops in, in darkness the dark. yeah yeah and basically what you want to do with that particular situation is that's the way you start to light the county Good point. Is, yeah. is you go to a safety issue and there's a couple of ways of doing that you can have the county work with the city to get some of their lights out there uh, working with uh, Pacific Power to get because it's all going to be hooked up that way the other way that you can do it is do it with private people for example around the bus stops have have somebody that owns part of the private put up one of those great big lamps mm -hmm. and possibly give them a tax break hmm, okay. and that way they're putting it up they're paying for it and keeping it up and it's up and they're getting they're getting an advantage of that so i mean there are ways of taking again that's a partnership of dealing with private versus public domain mm -hmm. but you've got to start someplace and the idea where you have to start it to me is bus stops and yeah. so you have to partner with the hot with the school to take a look at that uh, to find out where those bus stops are, because if if you're a young kid, I mean, young kids do not just stand there nice and pretty nice in a line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they may stand there for about five minutes, but all of a sudden it takes one, and boom! Yeah. You, and if you're not driving real careful, you're going to grab one of them. Starting like that, though, starting with the bus stops, and 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 I mean, yeah, that's brilliant. That's a great place. That's a great way to start. Is there any chance of their using like the the funding that we get from the state specifically for that for the the roadways and and thoroughfares that ha that have forget the name of it there's an acronym for it yeah that uh, uh that feeds schools and things like that and we've used that for infrastructure repair and sidewalks and it bike depends lanes on how the law is written at that particular time mm -hmm. uh so but from what i can see is it's basically going to be new funding that you're going to have to come up and look with but it's not something that has to be done all at once it has right. something that can be done you can budget it in a short amount amount and do 10 of them mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or yeah. so to just start just start with. Yeah. you've got to get it started uh, and that kind of situation so that's one of the things that i'm i'm looking at in in the long run 11 20 the time you're tuned to kfug community radio paul kritz with you hi and we're talking with jim ramsey candidate for the board of supervisors district two you've alluded a lot mentioned a whole bunch the dynamic keeps coming up in this conversation uh, um building partnerships Mm -hmm. Seems like it's kind of central to your whole approach for this being being as you've as you've referred to yourself as just like a local yokel average guy, you know, wanting to build a partnership and work because of anybody spending any time in the last few years watching the Board of Supervisors. It's not about the togetherness. Mm -hmm. So does it begin there, you know, starting with the uh, the other people sitting up at the dais with you? Well, you know, it does. It does. I mean, even on the harbor board, when we when we first started uh, started when I first got on 12 years ago, it was it took the har the rest of the harbor board to realize it took them about two years to realize realized that I actually knew what I was talking about, oh, really? <laughs> That's, yeah. you know, because because I was a a different person than they've been on there. And right, I mean, you right. know, a number of a number Were they of trying to show you things like, Jim, this is a boat. 
<laughs> no, not quite harbor. that. Okay, no, not okay, quite that bad. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's like, well, what do you know about labor? What do you know about how to fund fund this and stuff? You're just yeah. a class classroom teacher. Da 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 da. da those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And and it and it was an interesting phenomenal phenomena. And uh, finally, they started going, wow you really know what you're talking about. And Mm -hmm. I said, well, thank you. I mean, I only went to college for, you know, basically many, many years because I was one of the professional student people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Graduated from college with 284 units. (laughs) You're just outside, outside at the beginning of the school year selling credits to kids. Hey, you need need a class? So, so, I mean, you know, I I enjoyed, (laughs) I enjoyed school, uh, school a lot. And so I got a lot of information and it's just, it's just little things like that. I mean, so, partnerships is working together with everybody on the board and taking everybody as an equal equal person and taking a look at they've got ideas and if they can come up with something that seems like it might work because I'm one of these types of people that I listen to what everybody says and then I think about it and then I make a decision one way or another and uh, and that way I'm considering everything that's going on right and so so that's the way that you form partnerships you 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 give the 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 respect to the person whether they you you agree with them or not so they cuz they they're all intelligent for the most part <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So there's a question I like to ask candidates just to kind of get a, a feel for the for the the philosophy that they bring to a, or potentially will bring to an to an office. The uh, um, there seem to be it's just like actors how there are actors who 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 are character actors who kind of inhabit a role and come in and take it over. You know the people who can uh, look like somebody else, and then there are actors who are just themselves in a role. You know like John Wayne, like Tom Cruise, people like that. No matter you just put them in different situations, and I see sort of an analog with uh, uh, politics between uh, the people who are elected, and this is broad stroke black and white and i'm sure we're somewhere gray in the middle with most humanity but the people who are elected to represent their constituency are the people who are elected because they have an agenda to enact there seems to be like those seem to be like two opposite how do you see that interplay between here i'm coming to the office this is my philosophy these are the things i want to i want to achieve but also i'm here to represent everybody in my in my district is there is there tension is there a, is that about a difficult balancing act to sort of keep those things separate or are they the same thing for you well i i think that it's it's something that you have to do because you rec- represent the district that you're working with so basically you've got to you've got to talk to people and ask people what they want mm-hmm. and and what they feel about certain things so basically what I would do is probably do a lot of town halls and just sit there and talk about it and stuff because Lord knows I guess there's quite a bit of money involved with with uh, with the county supervisor job that I I'm not even really interested in at this particular point uh, because that's not my gig I mean you know I've got I've got what I've got my retirement and that usually is fine. Mm-hmm. Usually is fine. <laughs> well, I mean, the other thing is, is, is as I say, one of my, my war on blights is, is I cut, for example, in my neighborhood, I, I cut five lawns, not including my own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I get paid absolutely. I know this about you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, zero for it. Yeah. Uh, it's just keeping the area clean. So, I mean. I money is not a big issue. The, the money I do get from the people who who can afford to pay it usually covers covers my four to five broken down seven year old mowers. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you know, I got four or five. I've got five mowers in my shed. My my wife. Oh can't my get gosh. Me. And so one's always running. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In some fashion, shuffle the parts. And so anyway, uh, no, I've got a, a guy who lives across the street from me who, when a, when a mower goes down, he throws it together out of parts. Out of parts. He's got junk in his yard. So, so that kind of situation. But it's basically, again, that's partnerships. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's those kinds of things. So you've got to conclude what you've got to hear what your constituency wants. Mm-hmm. And you've also got to hear what the rest of the board wants. I mean, you know, and, and try to work it out that way. Yeah. I mean, I remember uh, one of my labor issues, which was, was a great situation many, many years ago on the Harbor Board. One person came up and said, I think we should fire all of our employees and bring them back as general contractors which is a big thing in the states right now they're Mm -hmm. they're talking a lot about that and i looked at him point blank and said over my dead body 
uh, and basically went straight through it. And we, we went to an, the next meeting and we argued and everything about it. And I, I was not budging off of that. And then we came back to the next meeting and I said, okay, I will consider this, but we start at the top. You give up your, your benefits and your stipend, mm -hmm. and then we can talk about that. Then we'll 1099 you. Wow. Uh, so what how happened? Far, how, yeah, what happened then? How far did that go? <laughs> it, 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 was put on as a, it was put on for a vote, and it was defeated four to one. <laughs> but, uh, but what it did was end that conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's, and that has to do with some situations that I feel about negotiations and labor negotiations. Uh, it seems that what we have in, in normal normal situations is they uh, they start at the top and move down, okay? Start at the top with what? Meaning, well, okay, administration gets their raise, then then the next prioritizing who down gets, yeah. down the thing. Yeah, and, and to me, that's back ass words. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, basically what you've got to do because the top, they're okay. And if they if they if they they aren't okay, they're doing something wrong with their budgeting and so mm -hmm, forth. Mm -hmm. The bottom is struggling, and that's where you need to put your your thing. So I think that when we see, when you start to look at negotiations and things like that, you've got to start at the bottom and move up. I mean, for example, since I've been on the harbor board, and this was kind of a thing, are are we do have an when. Uh, our benefits, we do get our benefits, but we get only what the the SEA, S, SE, SEIU? Or no, no. S the CSE, CSDA, the California the Employees <laughs> Union, or CSEA. Okay, okay. Okay, the California Employees Unions, whatever they're paying, that's what we get for benefits. Okay. If that's what we spend. I'm on, well, on, uh, on, what is it, uh, Medicare and all that kind of stuff, so I don't get anywhere near that, and that's yeah. fine. Um, I, and and stuff, but the the situation is is our stipend. We have not had a raise in our stipend since I've been on the board, and it's just we don't need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so so it's been that situation, and in a lot of kinds, that's something that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you've got to start, you've got to start with the people who need it before you give the people who don't really need it more yeah good point good point I, and this is uh you know this doesn't have any real bearing on anything you know on your on your campaign but i gotta ask uh thoughts on uh, what's happening with the uh the school district and the teachers union do you want to chime in on that um <laughs> okay i understand both sides mm -hmm. okay uh i am a substitute but i haven't been substituting for uh for a uh, long, long time because of campaigning, it just takes up a lot of my yeah, time yeah. Um, and everything, which is good and it's, it gives me a good excuse because uh, I am very, very union oriented. Yes. I have been a union person for most of my career. I started union with uh, the bartenders and uh, restaurant workers union when I was 14. Oh, wow. Uh, way back in the 60s. And uh, I was washing dishes for a smorgasbord, uh, so I've been on it. Been involved in a union for a very, very long time. I would not cross picket lines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I don't know if that answers the question because sure. I understand both sides. But I definitely am sympathetic to it towards teachers because I I was a teacher and yeah, still yeah, am. Yeah. Um, but uh, but again, partnerships have to be looking at and if they had taken the situation and and you've got to take a look at what's going on uh, because up in the upper administration there's like what 10 15 people and they get their three percent well that three percent looks a lot bigger because they automatically make more money mm -hmm. but then you get down to teachers and there's 180 or 190 and then csea there's over 200 so that that amount of money that they break down goes smaller in each every, and so it occurs uh, much less quickly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the more further down you go. So I mean, to me, it's like a situation should have been where maybe the upper administration should wait for a while. Right, right. Uh, it's almost it's almost like the uh, the, the kinds of. Uh the benefit or the, uh, the 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 raises, the periodic raises, and the scheduled raises. These are things that are all laid out in contracts. It's not just oh, you've been doing a good job. Here's a, here's another yeah. twenty grand for you this year. It's all like you know, it's 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 prescribed. But the uh, 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 that it seems like mm, 
like you're absolutely right. The breakdown is different as far as the percentage and and the 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 the. the it's just a bad optical illusion if <laughs> if administration is getting their cola, you know, thing, and it's and it's standard and this is laid out and no, it's not a surprise. And here's your your three point two six or whatever it is three three point two five raise. It just looks bad. Mm-hmm. And maybe I guess the argument would be if if you'd handled this negotiation, you know, I don't know, a little differently. 10 months ago when it started and you know, it wouldn't look bad. It's like, it's an optical illusion. Sure, you people are entitled to this raise. It's in your contract. This is, it's all going according to plan here. But it just doesn't look good because it's not happening for this big, you know, for the labor, for the unionized. For it's the not labor, happening. Exactly. Yes. And and so, you know, maybe if, it, if all things being equal, if they'd handled the labor and given them priority, dealt with them, then that, that cost of living adjustment that you get as an administrator, nobody's going to even care. Nobody's going to notice. Well, the, the other issue, too, is is you're right they're because of priorities, but you've also got to take it into financial as, aspects of it. 3% of 150000 yeah, is yeah. a lot different different than 3% of 14 or 20,000. Right. Uh, so, I mean, you know, come on. And and so you've got to take a look at, at making that fairly equal across the board. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, so that you don't, the, the administrator don't get, doesn't get, you know, for, for lack of a better example, just say they don't get five thousand dollars increase on a month was to as opposed to two hundred and fifty dollars. Right, right. Uh, you know because that doesn't cover the five thousand dollars at the top may cover benefits and stuff the increase in benefits, but the two hundred and fifty on the bottom doesn't. Right, right. So I mean you've got to kind of look at those kinds of situations, mm-hmm. and again then there's the need for partnerships. There's a main actual need in in when you're starting to negotiate, you've got to negotiate that this is the pot of money. And it can only go so far. How can we put it up, not necessarily equally, but satisfactorily to mm-hmm. everybody? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's something that needs to be looked at in that that situation. So, um, and it seems like healing the board of supervisors. I mean, that's something that would really, really help. That, these days, it, it it appears, at least to me, following along as I do, uh, that the board of supervisors is unified on a, on a lot of things nowadays. But that unification comes at the price of basically excising Roger Gitland. And to a certain extent, Bob as well. And then the three, you know, uh, Cowan, Hemmingson, and Howard are like, okay, let's pull together. Let's do all of this. We've gotten all of our ducks in a row when it comes to last chance grade. And everybody's on the same page with that. You're looking askance and up and to the left. Do you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? It seems like after the initial wrangling and, and Bob with this number he pulled out of the air about, oh, there's this much federal funds available and all of that. Well, no, I, last chance grade is happening because a lot of people put their, their two cents worth, including, you know, Jim right. Wood, including Mike McGuire. All the stakeholder groups, everything, the, yeah. The, the stakeholder groups and everything. But last, what people are failing to look at is last chance grade wouldn't be happening if two, one of two things didn't did, didn't happen. Okay, it's starting to sound like an SAT question. Go ahead. Well, okay, what it is, very <laughs> simple. If... SB1 mm-hmm. had not been passed mm-hmm. to start with, there would be no money for last chance right, grade. Right. If measure six had been not defeated, mm-hmm. there would have been no money for last chance and grade. And that's what gets me is that this county votes to defeat or votes to uh, uh, whatever the, whatever the, 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 it was measure six, votes for measure six for proposition six. To cut, it's like cutting off our, yes. our own nose, and, right? And if any of those things had happened, all you have to do is ask your elected officials. Mm-hmm. The situation, if one of those two things hadn't happened, uh, had happened, we would have no money on last chance grade. It doesn't matter how great and wonderful you, you, you scream and yell. Or the partnerships that you've built. Yeah, because, and, yeah. because what happens is all the money that, that was in the budget then would go to bridge repair in Southern California in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And that's it. There's no money for up here. I'm, and and so, we we've, we've got to start thinking in terms of those things because I think that the work that's been done on last chance grade is great, and I I would love. I, I'm very much into continuing it, but the the fact of the matter is is you've got to do your homework on it. It's those two things were critical to to us going on it, mm-hmm. and. Uh, 
And I think that, that also the other side of that is the working with McGuire and Wood and, and Huff, Huffman have been critical in doing yeah. that kind of situation because at least it brought to the forefront of the things that need to be done. But when you're talking, talking about funding, you've got to be very, very careful as to what you're, you're taking a look at. And, and that's, why I, that's why my escant was is because okay. uh, I'm sitting there going there there's these two things that had to happen right right without those none of this none yeah of this it wouldn't have mattered away. talking about it or not we'd still be in the situation but, go but ahead, last okay. chance was they were the state's been aware of last chance for quite a while because of the amount of money that they spend keeping it open so yep. they were going to have to do certain things mm -hmm. okay um you know so we'll just have to see how it goes and keep working at it uh, 1136 the time we're talking with Jim Ramsey uh, who's running for the Board of Supervisors for some reason <laughs> I don't understand why anybody would choose to lay out the time and the money to go do that uh, um, but uh, I don't know it seems like uh, and, and anyway I'll give you the time 1137 KFUG community rate thank you there I learned to uh, to do that periodically throughout an interview like this from Mike Thornton he's been a <laughs> he's been a great teacher the um, so day one Let's just uh, let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's say, and I'm not going to you know, talk about in in District One who gets elected, whatever. But day one, you hit the ground running as brand new, uh, brand spanking new uh, supervisor on the board here in Del Norte County. What do you come out the gates doing? What I come out do the gates doing is I take a look at, at. I would like to bring to the thing with the safety issue about lighting. I would also like to take a look at what committees I'm going to be on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a look at what that entails. I want to take a look at, at who is on the board so that I can then figure out where I can work and, and what I need to do to work and get things done. Um, you know, those kinds of situations because the dy if I'm if they're on there, the dynamics change in the in the three to two voting. But I'm I'm hoping that what we can start getting on the board and that's what is what I'm gonna work for is is five zero four one type situations where we're getting where everybody's voting on appropriate. Oh, five of the votes got you yeah yeah yeah, yeah so, it's been a long time since there was a unanimous vote is yeah. <laughs> it's been so a while. i mean you know it's just so that we can start to take a look at really what needs to be done i mean we've got we've got example in this area not only do you have front street and k street right there you have uh a street Take mm -hmm. a look at A Street going down, down, down through the city. You have Harding, where Harding has been, uh, where the county brought down to the bridge, where the bridge fell down, and then the rest of the thing. That thing's getting a lot of potholes now mm -hmm. from from there to to Northcrest. I mean, just s simple things like that. You have the homeless situation, which Inflex is is affected by affordable housing, as I've talked about, and you. It's also it affects our tourism trade. Yeah. Okay. Um, You've got the Circuit Court Nine to do. You've got things where I and I'm a big, big supporter of 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 uh, Daily Bread. Mm -hmm. Daily Bread actually got started on my front lawn 17 really? years ago. Seriously, How'd I was that, the, that was that they, I was the first people that the group of people stopped with. So that might might and, <laughs> and, and, and stopped that. And we talked and we did everything and we we got dinners uh, set out of the old building that was uh, closed down. That was is now the gym behind the old Shop Smart. Right. That's where we, we started feeding people. We fed two nights, two nights a night, then we got, and so basically those are, those are the types of things that you need to find out because homelessness is a big issue. One of the things that I, I look at a lot with that is, you know, we have the old McCarthy Center area where the building was behind the fairgrounds. Yes. But it was a parks, my understanding was a park and recreation building. Uh -huh. And so the park and recreate, the, the, the state parks have taken the building back. So property's there. Isn't there, isn't there a, a, a charter school going in out there somewhere? I, that I don't know. Okay. And if there, uh, for, that's what I'm, we, you need to find, find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to take a look at the pieces of property that the county owns where you could put a bed, a uh, bed. Uh, uh, up to a 70 bed facility because in order to change the circuit court number nine you have to have beds for 70 people here yeah yeah and so that has to be done and further 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 that you have to take a look at is you have to take a look at the situation where <clears throat> where um you get everything to build the buildings and get the buildings going and and get it brought brought up to snuff the person that is doing that or the organization that's doing that 
has to have the whole list of things that needs to be done yeah. at one time. Right, right. That way they can budget, they can take a long, long-term long pa- pa- uh, planning and that kind of thing so that they know what needs to be done. What happens often is it's, well, you need to do this. And they go, okay, so they do they that. Do that. And, come and, then back, just... and then they go, well, you've done a nice job. <laughs> but now you, you need do to this. do this. Yeah, that, com- and, that kind of compartmentalization that and, just saps things. Whoa, sorry, that's my headphones coming off. Sorry, there we go. So, so you need to take a look at that. You've got to work together. To, again, yeah. there's partnerships. Right, right. You know, you've got to take a look at those kinds of things and get it done. Because once that happens, then you've got the ability to go and say, look, you can't stay here. The thing that's like, like uh i i really have to there are lots of organizations just to show you how things are changing okay uh tuesday tuesday saint paul's episcopal church Mm -hmm. is doing shower tuesday okay shower tuesday what that does is they open up they have a shower they feed them they feed them uh, a soup they get them some clean clothes my uh, my mom and stepdad do that. Yeah. They come over from the Methodist Church and, and volunteer well, there. For and that. the yeah. Methodist Church is really interested to, into running the town, the the tiny house formation. So mm-hmm, those mm-hmm. are partnerships. Yeah, those are the things. But instead of instead of saying, uh, instead of not letting them do it, we need to find out way find ways for them to do it. Exactly. You know, it comes back to well, we need to rent this space to them, and and if it's at a, at a reasonable rent. Yeah. Yeah, you to know, help facilitate not, these things. Yeah, these so that we can facilitate these things because those are things that are important to be happening. Mm-hmm. And there are a number of things along that where, which are really going on. There's there are so many different situations happening within the community. It's a real positive thing. Whereas when it first started, it was not a positive thing at all. It was right. very negative. And now now there's there's actually state money available as mm-hmm. well to help. With there's some, things. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jim Ramsey, 11.43 the time. I've got, it looks like uh, Ted and Kira are outside there in the yard. Uh, We're going to talk recycling here. Uh, So let's let's wrap up next couple of minutes. Is there anything I didn't ask? Anything you want to get out, want to say to to the listeners out there? Well, I mean, you know, there's a, okay, what I can say real point blank about it is there's a chance to change the command, the, the makeup of the harbor of the board this year, the sent the, oh, the board of supervisors <laughs> board, of super- board, <laughs> board this time. There's a chance to change it, and and you can do that. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And there's you know District One. There's a there's a whole different personnel on there. District uh, Five has got a whole uh, got people running, and they've got me running at this particular thing. Uh, you have a chance to change it for the better, uh, and if if you can do it, and if you can't, well, then you got. Nobody to blame but yourself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the political wisdom, Jim Ramsey. You got a democracy. Nobody to blame for yourself if it's not working. We were going to do a, a like a liner or something, Jason and I, for KFUG, basically. Hey, we're community radio. If you don't like it, it's your fault. <laughs> but no, no, that's not what we're not going to do. All well, right. Well, let, me, let me put it this way. A vote for me is a vote for honesty, integrity, and a commitment to the future. I have been here for 25 years, and my whole whole thing has been to make this a more pleasant place to come to have hopefully my kids can come back here Mm -hmm. find meaningful employment that with a reasonable wage and and be able to retire here and raise a family here yeah and that's that's been my commitment everything that i have done in the last 25 years has been to make this area better you know and that's where i'm at Right on, Jim Ramsey. Thank you so very much. Uh, at some point, we'll talk later on, and we'll uh, we'll do this uh, when we get off. But I, I'm talking with Jessica Sainar. We're, we're hoping to get together before, certainly, of course, before Super Tuesday, a candidates forum, and maybe get everybody together and and get on and you know, not the fisticuffs, but you know, just have everybody come. Well, together. Well, uh, my understanding is there is a forum on the 10th of February coming up. It'll be at the Methodist Church. Yeah, but we want to do a cooler one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll be there as well. (laughs) Jim Ramsey, candidate for uh, Del Norte County Board of Supervisors, District 2. Thanks for coming in and joining us today. Um, We'll get this. uh, We recorded this. We'll get this up online here. And, uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Have you back on and and talk again soon and uh, and, uh, talk about what I need to do uh, with the lawn out there. Uh, My pleasure.